When you use the Focus Builder app, there's really two different types of stimulation that you can, you can use to, uh, to help your patients. One is the visual stimulation using the visual pathway, and the other is the oculomotor system uh, in order to control eye movements. So you could use eye movement therapy or visual stimulation types of therapy. So let's take a look at the visual system now. Um, in the visual system, as information comes in through the eye and reaches the retina at this level here, in the back of the eye it reaches the retina, and the visual information gets transmitted through the optic nerve and through the optic chiasm and then the optic tract and then eventually reaches the lateral geniculate nucleus right here and then gets transmitted through the optic radiation all the way back to the occipital cortex, so the, the visual cortex. And once it reaches the visual cortex, at this uh, look at the bottom of the page here, you've got uh, different areas, uh, V1, V2, V3, and V4 of uh, visual processing. V1 is where you, you have your, your central vision. And as you make your way closer to that V3, uh, then you've got the more uh, peripheral uh, types of visual stimulation. Once it reaches the uh, V1, V2, V3, V4 area, from there it'll get um, uh, processed through either the dorsal pathway, the dorsal pathway, which is the wear pathway, um, in the parietal lobe, the posterior parietal cortex, or the ventral pathway, which is the wet pathway. We call it the wet pathway because this is uh, information that reaches the temporal lobe and, and, and your brain can then determine exactly what you're looking at, whereas the uh, dorsal stream, the wear pathway, gives you better awareness of space. So spatial processing here, as you look at that middle picture, uh, gives you awareness of location of movement and spatial transformation, spatial relations, um, awareness of space. So, and you need this when you uh, think of it as you know when you when you're walking through the woods, and um, and you're looking at at where you're going to put your feet, where you're going to step. Um, that where stream gives you the ability to determine, you know, how to move through space and what's around you and, uh, and gives you that, that awareness. So it's a much faster um, types of stimulation. It's a faster frequency of, uh, of movement. So it really picks up the high frequency movement. Whereas the uh, temporal lobe, where the ventral or wet stream is, uh, gives you, um, is really more efficient for object processing, size, shape, pictorial details, texture, color. Um, that would be the wet, the wet stream in the ventral lobe. Okay, so let's take a look now at our hemistim guide. So we're going to use the, the hemistim is really our best option uh, in the Focus Builder app to stimulate the, the visual system. And we can stimulate the visual system without using the oculomotor system. And sometimes that is indicated for patients. Uh, but we also have the option to, to have the hemistim application play in the background while you're doing an eye strategy. So you could actually use the visual system as well as the oculomotor system for eye movement training uh, at the same time. So when you look at uh, this quick reference sheet, you'll see that we've really divided it into two different categories. There's the parietal, the parietal and temporal strategy which is up here at the top, and the hemispheric strategy. So you can put together um, different types of visual stimulation to either specifically target um, a parietal lobe or a temporal lobe. So looking at the uh, parietal lobe stimulation, the parietal lobe, um, as you stimulate the uh, dorsal pathway, visual input goes through uh, magnocellular retinal neurons via the dorsal stream pathway. And these pick up low contrast, high processing speed, 
colors on the blue end of the spectrum, which will be blue, purple, indigo, um, larger size images, so it's a big picture, think big picture, parietal lobe, large, and the lower field of vision. So if you want to stimulate uh, parietal lobe, you want to make sure you're aware of these settings. On the temporal lobe um, side, uh, when you stimulate, want to stimulate the temporal lobe, you will target parvocellular retinal neurons in the ventral stream. And so they are in the upper field of view. And higher contrast, low processing speeds, uh, red end of the spectrum, so your uh, orange will be there and some yellow as well. And uh, in terms of size, they're, they're they pick up more detail, small pictures, small images, details. Now, if you wanted to create a more hemispheric strategy, either for the left brain or the right brain, you'll find that the right brain is very similar to, in terms of the criteria here, very similar to the parietal lobe. Um, you know, they're big pictures, so they, they respond the right brain responds better to peripheral field of vision, um, high frequency colors, blue, indigo, purple, green, which is the blue end of the spectrum. Size is large. You know, again, big picture is better for the right brain, and low contrast. In terms of the visual field, the right brain would be stimulated via the left field of view, left field of view. Whereas the right brain would be stimulated through the from the right field of view, uh, the right brain uh, is best we could say um, stimulated through the central field of vision. It detects slow movement, um, at low low frequency, um, red color, orange, yellow, small size, high contrast. Okay, now naturally. Both sides of the brain can perceive information on both sides here, in both columns. But uh, the, the reason why we separate it this way is, is so that if you wanted to pick features that are more uh, likely to stimulate one hemisphere more than the other, then you would follow this, uh, this guide. So just to kind of give you a, a little sample of how this could be used clinically, if you had a patient, for example, with dyslexia, and uh, in this case with dyslexia, we know that uh, there's a problem with the temporal lobe, that's where word processing is, um, and we would want to target that area specifically. So in this case, we want to, uh, in the field of vision, we want to use that right upper quadrant, right upper quadrant, and that's where you want your stimulation to be. Uh, colors that you would use would be red, and you want high contrast, right? This is what we're looking at here. Um, red, high contrast, high contrast. So uh, white is, from white to red gives you a high contrast. You could use yellow as well, but um, red and white's a good example. Um, small size, you know, the, the hemistim size, the size of the square, and I'm going to show you this in a second. They're going to be very small. Uh, the, the speed or frequency will be low. On the Focus Builder app, the low frequency are 10 to 12. Below 10 is really ultra low. I mean, we re rarely uh, use those features. So let me show you what this looks like in the uh, Focus Builder app. We're going to select the Hemistim uh, app, and under Settings, uh, I'm going to create uh, settings here that are more specific to the left temporal lobe to go along with our example here. So uh, you'll see that the color one there, I already selected red, color two is selected white. The size is set as the smallest. You can see that you can change the size. There's five different sizes. And the speed is set at 12 uh, to keep it low. And again, the upper right quadrant is selected. The other quadrants are turned off. And I also turned on that center fixation dot. And that'll give the patient somewhere to fixate and to look at while they're getting that visual stimulation. Um, you can save these exercises. I already saved it here as left temporal lobe. Okay. So let's start this so you can get an idea of what that looks like. 
Uh, again, you would have your patient look at that uh, fixation dot there right in the center. And if it's appropriate, you can even have your patient do some gaze exercises while they are uh, getting this uh, stimulation, this visual stimulation as well. Um, let's give you a different example here. Uh, let's say that I wanted to stimulate a, the, we'll, we'll go with left, uh, I'm sorry, right parietal lobe. So right parietal, the, we know that the parietal lobe responds well to the lower field of view, and um, since it's the right parietal lobe, it would be the left lower field of view. So bottom left quadrant would be on. We're going to increase the speed because the parietal lobe responds better to faster speed and the larger size. So we're going to go to large here. And uh, the color is going to be, we can use blue. And uh, we're going to use a purple as well. So blue and purple would work. There's uh, less contrast that way. Um, and there we go. So we can save it if we want to or not. But let's, uh, let's start that. And there is your right parietal lobe stimulation. And uh, again, here the fixation dot is on. I can turn it off if I wanted to. Um, now, in this case, you know, those are pretty large uh, squares. We could even use that medium option which are still fairly decent size, and that would work well. Now, um, if I wanted to do a right brain or a left brain uh, full hemisphere, uh, let's see here, let's, let's turn on the other left quadrant. So in this case here, it would be a right brain stimulation. And uh, I'm just going to change that purple here for We'll change it for white, or actually gray. Gray would be good. There we go. So this is more of a right brain stimulation. If I wanted to do the left brain, I would turn all, all these quadrants off and turn the ones on the right on. Slow it down a little bit. Um, reduce the size of the uh, squares and change the color. Let's pick, uh, let's, let's change it up a little bit. So I'm going to do a red and uh, also do a yellow just so you get to see what that looks like. And there you go. This would be a left brain stimulation. Okay, so that uh, gives you, I think, a good idea of how to use the app to stimulate the brain through the visual system.